Hi, I'm Lee Abrams, and uh, we're going to look at a psychographic chart, or a lifestyle chart. And it's arguable, and uh, maybe a little incomplete, but I find it very valuable for uh, helping uh, structure a new programming format or a new media product, because it really outlines how the world is thinking beyond raw demographics. So, um, up here you got culturally sophisticated. And these people are um, really aware of what's going on in global culture. They're aware of movies and books and certainly restaurants and things like that. And um, their sophistication really is part of, ingrained in their life. Now down here you got culturally unsophisticated. And these people aren't dumb. There are a lot of very, very bright, culturally unsophisticated people. What it means is they're just not tied into what's going on in the world uh, as far as cultural issues, art and music. Uh, they tend to think very mainstream. They're not exploring uh, new cultural opportunities. Uh, but again, they're not stupid. They're just not very sophisticated in, uh, in culture. Over here, the digital generation, their whole life has been digital. Uh, you show them a timetable, and a turntable rather, and they have no idea what it is. Uh, a record, a disc, you know, just, huh? how does that work? Over here, the analog generation, these people, grew up on analog. You show them a record player and an album, and they go, oh yeah, of course, I have a lot of these. And uh, they're very digital, uh, digitally savvy in that they have phones and they have uh, uh, computers and all that, but they, it's not where they're rooted. They're rooted more in the analog world. So we're gonna look at uh, different quadrants or different lifestyles based on their cultural sophistication or unsophistication and whether they're digital or analog rooted. Now over here, these people are part of the digital generation and very sophisticated culturally. They tend to be sick and dark thinking. And what that means is you can't go, you know, good morning, everybody, beautiful day. Like, no, it's not. Or, you know, good morning, America. And they're just like, goes right over the hood, like, no, get out of my face. Very edgy. You know, they're, again, not, not tense, but just always kind of on edge. And, uh, and living that lifestyle that's, that's edgy, um, untrickable. You cannot trick these people. Uh, you can't uh, say, uh, home of the best music. They'll go, no, it's not. The best music is on uh, my device. Or you can't say, you know, first, best action news uh, on it. <laughs> Give me a break. They'll just see right through that. Uh, they're very, very suspicious about any kind of slogan because a lot of those times they're lies and they feel they're being tricked and uh, they don't buy it. They're the streaming generation. They uh, stream uh, videos, stream music. Uh, it's very natural for them. Uh, they're the progressives, the Bernie Sanders crowd, uh, very open to, uh, to all the various progressive issues and very supportive of them and you know they just buy it. It reminds me of, uh, you know, when I was young way back, um, you know, we were very, a lot of our, our, our generation was very uh, progressive in terms of anti-Vietnam and, uh, and you get Nixon out of office. Well, this is a, the 21st century uh, equivalent of that. And their cultural tastes are being formulated right now as we speak. They're developing their taste for life in things like music um, and art. And uh, this is where everything they like is brilliant, everything they don't like sucks. And this is gonna stay with them for a long time. And uh, you know, it's very important to understand their musical taste now. You don't have to like it, but realize that uh, this is their music and they're gonna grow up with it and it'll be with them till they, till they die. Now over here, culturally sophisticated, but more the analog generation. And um, they're very cerebral. You can't get too in their face, so just you know, back off. Game free. You know, they're not going to buy into Publishers Clearinghouse. They're not going to call in and be the 10th caller to win. Uh, they just don't buy games. They rather work. Um, cultural and media explorers. They're always open to new explorations. Uh, a new movie that just takes you, you know, takes it over the top. They love a new restaurant, a new cuisine. They'll totally be into that. They are exploring. They haven't stopped exploring. Their roots are firmly in, you know, the 16 to 20. But um, they continue to, to explore and seek new adventures. 
environmental, and this doesn't mean uh, the environment, although they are environmentalists generally, but it means they view and listen in an environment, uh, whether it's driving along in a car with the music going, or um, you know, in, in their home, even uh, with the television going, but they're making dinner. So you gotta think environment more than in your face with these folks. Uh, tend to be liberal, not progressive, but generally very central, leaning liberal. And um, their culturally tastes have been formulated. Again, when they were 16 to 20, those are the roots of where they are and where they'll continue to be, particularly obvious in music. Uh, that's why you see maybe um, Eagles, Paul McCartney, doing incredible business on the road because it's these people. Their, their, culturally, their cultural tastes, their musical tastes are just bound with these uh, artists that they grew up with. Now, the analog generation that's culturally unsophisticated, this is really very mainstream. They're pretty gullible. Uh, they will buy into the uh, publisher's clearinghouse. They will be the 10th caller. Uh, you can use a slogan, we're the best, most variety, and they'll probably buy it. A lot of terrestrial radio success is based on this particular generation. They like it familiar, you know, never heard it before, turn it, turn it out, whether it's television or media or food even. You know, they're not going to try this weird new cuisine that these people would, uh, you know, embrace. Uh, very traditional values, very traditional lifestyles, traditional homes, traditional relationships. They're culturally blasé. You know, they don't really care about the advances in culture and, and new things that are going on. Lean conservative, uh, and they support and embrace junk culture, which is pop culture's evil cousin. And these are things like reality shows that we all know may be very successful, but are kind of cheesy. And they'll embrace them. You know, and I call it junk culture. Uh, commercials that are just really cheesy or goofy, they'll say, hey, that's funny. Uh, and that's all part of what I call junk culture, which is, again, pop culture's evil cousin. It's, it's popular, but it's kind of junky and dumb-downy. Dumb um, moving over here, the digital generation that is culturally unsophisticated. These are a lot of teens, and, uh, and preteens, and um, they're ADD. I mean, they just operate at a very fast speed. They're phone addicted. They will literally go through withdrawals if their phone is taken away from them. They are so connected to their phones and devices. They love it in your face. Don't give them subtle, just in your face, they'll buy into it. Now, Everything with them is right now. They have no sense of history. Uh, an oldie, whether it's an old TV show or an old anything, they don't get it. It's all about what's going on right now. They really buy into junk culture. You know, the uh, Kardashians, wow, oh, they're so cool. Um, and uh, it's very easy to, to market junk culture to them just because they're so open to it. And OMG or BFF, you know, it's, they have their own language. And... Um, Sometimes hard to interpret, but they know what it is. And if you read any of their texts, it's like, it's, to us, you know, to someone my age or even slightly older, it'll be kind of foreign. So uh, these are the four very general, but you know, very predictable lifestyle types. And some characteristics about all of them is authenticity. You gotta be authentic. All these, all these uh, generations will see right through something that is trying to reach him that's not authentic. Again, uh, you look at even this audience, um, they like these, uh, these YouTube vloggers that are, you know, they might be crazy and very young, focused and kind of junky, but they're authentic and that really works. Focused, you can't be all over the map. Pick your turf. Uh, you can't be this and some of this and sometimes this. You gotta be one of these four. Otherwise, you're just watering everything down. Over the top, OTT. This is very important. You gotta be over the top. You can't kind of do anything, particularly today. The environment is so media saturated that you just can't uh, kind of do something. You gotta go you know, in your face with it uh, as far as uh, the intensity of, of the focus of what the vision is. Fans, not users. Uh, media is very much addicted to uh, user numbers and uh, ratings and all that, and that's very important. 
for sales departments and for uh, metrics people. But if you're a creator uh, involved in the process of creating new media products, uh, you got to think about fans and not users. Are you, what you're doing, will it create big numbers or fandom? With fandom comes big numbers. So start thinking fan. And unbiased. You know, say, uh, we all know America is very divided, but unbiased, uh, if you can really do it, is very effective today. Uh, trying to stay away from the very extremes. Not being vanilla about it, but you know, being, being unbiased, being open to all sides. One thing I didn't mention here is appalling. That is very important that a product or a format, whether it's TV, radio, whatever, uh, needs to be appalling to the generations it's not targeting. For example, these folks, they probably find these people appalling. And, uh, you know, their, their beliefs are sometimes, you know, out to lunch and their music is just weird. And uh, these people will find these people kind of appalling. You know, they're elitist or whatever. Uh, these people will find pretty much everybody appalling. You know, think the Beatles, like, my parents like the Beatles. Why? They're terrible. They're stupid. They, you know, whatever. So you got to, uh, by being so pure in targeting these, uh, these generations, these quadrants, that your product appears appalling to the other generations. That's, why, that's part of being very pure. So anyway, um, I hope this helps. I have found it very useful. And again, it's arguable and it's kind of general, but I uh, hope you learned something from it because it can be very effective in targeting a product. So thanks for watching.